Here we go again. It's Learn Google Earth Studio with me, Mike Downs. This is the 26th video in this series, and 24 of them look like that total recording time, more or less 153 minutes. Now, we don't expect you to watch all of them in a row, but if you did, good luck. You will learn tons. You'll probably dip in and dip out as you go. So this one, which is chapter 10, number two, rendering part two software choices recorded today, 13th of Feb, 2019, is all about how you get those still images into an actual video. This larger dimensions will take longer. Do you know what? That's a mistake. Let's forget about that. Um, don't matter. I love using Google Slides in this way because I can edit as I go. So let's get started. Rendering still images on desktop. Here is our desktop laptop in this case. Now um, what we've got, and I'll do this very uh, you know, personal choice to me, is I've been using Vegas Movie Studio since February 2013, which is actually six years this month. Quite a long time I started off um, with Vegas 11, 12, kind of like sort of free type copies I found then um, a good while ago purchased. Now I don't expect anybody to spend that £60 or what ever unless you're into it. When I say into it is of course I've got in total 1300 videos at YouTube and going back to Google Earth Studio if I opened, bear in mind I have saved my rendered files, unzipped them and they're on my hard drive, I open up Movie Studio 15. Um, by the way, if you wanted to find how you render and unzip and that stuff, there is an earlier video, I think it was the quick start one. The point of it is, is that you render out, you've got a load of still frames. And what we do here is open up Movie Studio 15 Platinum, that's what I'm using little uh, yellow arrow in the middle saying ignore normal. Um, what that means is that my normal setup is 30 frames a second, but sharp eyes might see that this particular one is 12 frames a second. It's just that's what I do with screen recording. That's how it's set up. My point is this. Let's move along, Michael, please. No one calls me Michael. Um, here are our frames. I've gone file, open, and I found the St. Paul's footage and I've selected the very first frame. In Movie Studio, we checkbox open sequence. It knows that there's 240 and we open them. When we do that, it just asks us if we want to name the tape. I don't normally do. Once again, the frame rate here, ignore it says 12. It should be about 30 if I was going to do this real time. After that, we get the slides that are now into a video which are just like that on my movie studio timeline and after that we can click make a movie and render in the normal video way going on to the next version movie studio was a paid version that i use a video editor it's my main thing apart from power director on mobile my point is you can get things for free Black Magic Design do a product called DaVinci Resolve on screen. Now, when you go to this website, um, you need to get to the very, very top, of course, because that's how it opens. And then you have to scroll all the way down. It feels like your you know, mouse wheel finger is falling off if you have to scroll so much. But when you get there, it says DaVinci Resolve 15 free. Notice I put something on the bottom here, which is a little bit higher up, that says... DaVinci Resolve is available on Mac, Windows and Linux, which is really, really good for free. Um, when it I over... Uh, I can't speak. When it... I love doing this live, don't you? Because you make the mistakes as well. When you open the program, it starts up DaVinci Resolve 15. And don't ask me why there is a, a lady stood there <laughs> eating Chinese, but what fun. Then it's untitled click that you get this thing which looks like a video editor which i must admit you know i don't use i've got it obviously um, and then i negotiated my way so there's a thing up here called media pool and i've found my uh, files i think it was media pool and then i add the files to media pool and then you'll notice it in 
the Reddit says St Paul's semi 00 to 240 up the top here. Then you right click it and add it to the timeline. Honestly, this works um, because I did it. And there it is on the timeline, but it's not obviously for me personally a um, video program I use a lot, if not at all, but it's free and it's fantastic. And when you get to that level, you've got it on your timeline. It's ready to make. You can add stuff in the normal way or you can add it to the render queue and then you start the render. And when that's done, you have made yourself and you're the proud owner of a free video, in this case on St. Paul's. Now, you may ask about desktops. For me personally, what about After Effects? Do I use that? And the answer is no, I don't. And the reason I don't is because as a UK, and this is how I, I grew up, shall we say, from the advent of even 1998 when Google was founded. I was in schools teaching seven, eight-year-olds at that time. IT computers were taking off, and I really got into the habit of being, and I'll read this, as a UK school teacher, I would insist on using software that the children would easily have access to at home and always or pretty much for free i'd never ever remember saying to the children you must buy software ever and that's why i love all the google stuff and anything we can find for free open source software because they end a school lesson they go home and they could start up again where they left off at the bottom thing here and i don't really want to associate myself with it although i wrote it and that is After Effects, if I personally in the UK went out to buy it, it would be £20 a month, that's £240 a year, or £50 if I wanted all of the Creative Cloud apps, £600 every single year. Knowing that you can go off and have something amazing as that for free, I don't think so, but that is my preference and my personal opinion on me. With that said, of course, I did say that I went on to do... Um, Vegas Movie Studio, which I have purchased, but I make a lot of videos. Look, pause, move on to rendering still images on mobile because it can be done. And in this example, I did pay, I mean, less than $5. It wasn't much, $3. I don't know what it was. Stop Motion Studio on Android. What I did is I checked it out and I said, OK, can this be done? Add images, find the images which I've transferred to my mobile phone. You select it all, you added them very slow process on the importing when that's done it opens up as five frames a second i immediately went up to its max which is 30 frames a second which concurs which agrees with what google earth studio outputted anyway and bingo that was my five second video of st paul's cathedral in london done and there you go, 175 frames at 103 megs, and then you save it, share it, do whatever. So it can be done on mobile. Why would you do it on mobile? Well, I would actually say that the reason you would is really simple, and that is perhaps you're on the move, perhaps you're on a train or in a coach or in the back of a car somewhere, and you just think, well, I can do this, I can get it out quick, but I haven't got access to my full edit suite. So in other words, it can be done. Take a breath, pause, rethink. Other software choices. Now, in the official Google Earth Studio forum, a couple of people, I think a couple of product managers actually recommended things. I haven't vouched for these or tried them. What I mean is I'm just sharing the screen. Softpedia's, uh, what's it called? Images to video. Apparently it is there and the product managers of Google Earth kind of recommend, well, I didn't recommend it, they linked to it. And there's one here called Images to Video, and the other one is called Day of the New Dan. I think that's the website, isn't it? And it, this was Time Lapse Assembler, and it looks incredibly simple. You can donate to it. If it works, and they say it works, fantastic. You only need one thing. Moving along again. I've seen examples where, and I've tried these myself, is you can actually forget rendering altogether, providing on your laptop or your desktop or something has CPU that is strong enough, and you could actually just record your screen as you play back the Google Earth Studio Chrome window. Limited success, but it kind of like works. You know, if you didn't want to do anything with rendering whatsoever, why not have a go? And the other thing which I find is uh, is a fun part to end, and that is that you can trust, and I, I can't vouch that this is actually um, a younger human being who's done this, but I searched YouTube for Google Earth Studio and then looked at playlists, and this person looks like they are holding a mobile phone and just physically recorded their laptop screen. And I think it's just amazing, because when you go, I think this is Disneyland in Tokyo or somewhere, and 
they've, they've recorded it all and yeah you've got the attribution of the google earth um logo at the bottom right here but it's got this really incredible like tilt shift thing and they just recorded it and then got on with it and then added a few I don't know, frames post edit or something, uh, transitions. And, and that was it. So that's, I hope that was a bit of good fun, actually. I'm just going to end up on the very top one. You can see how I am motoring along here. And I think it was this one, wasn't it? Which was, we've just finished chapter 10, number two, rendering part two with the software choices. So please, please, please shout me a question or anything if you get stuck so far. This was about another 10 minutes. So that's 163 minutes of it. So good luck. See you in the next one.